So how did Kembrew make copyright criminals? How did he make how did he make the film? Legally. Number one, he relied on fair use for a lot of the stuff. I mean, there was 400 unlicensed uses, video and and film here, right? But he needed to license two dozen songs. Okay. And why would he need to license music in this instance? Well, number one, you could think like, yeah, he probably, you know, use too much, right? At some point, your fair use argument runs out. You've just used too much, like happened in a remix manifesto. Or, you know, probably what happened here, you know, was he was using people's music for non-commentary purposes. So he used beats by LP, by RJD2, stuff I made for, uh, you know, artists to talk over. Just instrumental backing. It was not part of, part of the critique, you know, it was just part of the film. And he didn't need the, you know, he needed to license that stuff because that was not part of the educational part or the, the critical part, okay? But he relied heavily on fair use. So, um, if we look at, like, if we were to Panam this, right, we were to look at this, like, we look at purpose, right? And under purpose, right, fair or not fair, of course, it's a fair use. It's very transformative. He's not exploiting, exploiting the works. He's using them for commentary. He's building upon them. Uh, he's using them for demonstrative purposes. The purposes are very, very different. Nature of the originals. We know that the originals are creative. Therefore, he would, he would fall probably in unfair. Um, amount used. I mean, he uses, oh, there's over 400 uses, so he uses a ton of stuff. Small bits. Some of them may be the hearts of the work, but it's so, he uses so much and it's so small that those hearts of the work are not particularly exploited, right? It's very different if you make a beat or if you you do a, a real short piece and you use like four really important songs as part of your critique and you use the most important parts of those songs but this is just there's so much in here that it's likely going to be fair use the, no matter what uh, how important the 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 works the bits used are to the original and market harm does it create any type of market harm None whatsoever, right? His uses do not replace the originals in the marketplace, create consumer confusion, or anything like that. Um, so it's a total fair use. Now, he had to have e and insurance. So this was distributed by Independent Lens, which is uh, PBS's uh, independent or PBS's film distribution company. And um, they made him have errors and omissions insurance. We already talked about what this was with the documentary filmmaking, but this is to cover for like um, if he were right or if pbs were to be sued for distributing this film right he has he gets the insurance to cover if he gets sued for copyright infringement if he gets sued for defamation or or slant, uh, libel or any or anything like like that so or trademark infringement for like someone wearing a new york yankees hat or anything like that so uh, he had to have that um, and of course errors and omissions insurers do accept fair use as part of their thing but he had a part as part of their you know package so like you bring your film to them and they decide whether they can insure it and if you can convince them and have a fair use lawyer that can also state that yes this much use is a fair use then you're 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 in the golden